All right, let's pick up where we left off. So we finished posting all of these journal entries to our general ledger. And now our next step in the instructions is going to be to prepare an unadjusted trial balance. So this video should be relatively short. What we're going to need is the general ledger. And then we are also going to need the unadjusted trial balance here. So if we take a look at these two pieces, what an unadjusted trial balance does is it lists every single account that we have. So each of these accounts are listed out here. And what it tells us is after we post all of those general journal entries to the general ledger, what is the balance in each of those accounts? So we're literally just going to be going through each ledger account and taking that final balance. So for example, here for cash, it has a $367,200 debit balance. Accounts receivable, 75,000 debit balance. Then we're going to do the same thing all the way down. Supplies should have a $3,000 balance. Prepaid rent, $18,000 balance. Equipment, uh, 56,500 debit balance. Now here's one that's blank. Uh, it's an accumulated depreciation account. That's a contra asset. So I'm going to put a zero there, but I'm putting it in the credit side. And this is where it goes back to those basic rules of normal balances. A contra asset has a normal credit balance. Uh, going on next to accounts payable, accounts payable has a 40,000 credit balance. Keeping it going. Salaries payable, nothing, but that zero is going to go on the credit side because it is a liability, and liabilities have normal credit balances. Unearned rent, oh, found an error from our last one. Take that out, there we go, 50,000. 50,000 credit balance. Cash dividends payable has a zero balance. Common stock has a 25,000 credit balance. 135,000 for paid in capital for common stock, 10,000 for preferred stock. Oh, that's another error actually. Careful on those, I was going way too fast. There you go. 100,000 for preferred stock, and then 105,000 for our paid in capital for our preferred stock. Same thing for paid in capital from sale of treasury stock. That has a normal credit balance, so we're going to put the zero in there. Same thing for retained earnings. Treasury stock is a 20,000 debit balance. Cash dividends, 8,000 debit. Cash dividends preferred, 2,000 debit. Consulting revenue, 112,000. Salary expense, 3,000 debit. Rent expense is zero debit, because that's the normal balance. Same thing for supplies, same thing for depreciation expense. And then 13,500 for advertising expense, and 800 for utilities expense, and we have a match. So this is probably one of the most important things if you're a student um, to kind of see if you're doing these types of problems. If your debits do not equal your credits, there is something wrong. You know, there was an error somewhere. So for example, remember how I put that preferred stock is 10,000? That would have thrown off my, ba my balance by $90,000. So I would have known, okay, I messed something up somewhere, right? So if your balances don't equal, that is your indicator to go back and figure out what you did wrong. Now, just because they do equal, that doesn't guarantee that you didn't make any mistakes, but it is a nice way of just kind of seeing if there is an error somewhere in the problem. Okay. So next up, we are going to be moving on to step four, which is your favorite, <laughs> adjusting entries. Um, we only have five in this, uh, this particular problem, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and journalize these next five adjusting entries in the next video. I'll see you there.